Hey everybody, Karsten with Top and Go Productions here, and today we begin taking a look at the new Commander 2015 pre-constructed decks. In these videos, we will take a look at each deck individually and attempt to either improve them or make them more cohesive for a mere 25 bucks. Today we are going to start with Wade Into Battle, the red-white deck. Like previous decks, each one of these comes with several commander options, but we are just going to look at the two shiny new general options in this pack. First up is Kalemni, Disciple of Erewas. This creature is aggressively costed at 4 mana and will hit someone for 6 with no help from her other abilities. In an almost Naya twist, her experience ability triggers when you play expensive dudes, which red and white have a host of because of all the angels, dragons, and giants. A solid Voltron commander that brings big dudes to the table instead of the little aggressive dudes that a lot of Boros decks are famous for. Anya Merciless Angel gets her name from her ability to just get more outrageous as your opponents get beaten to a pulp. Without a doubt, her best friend is Heartless Hitetsugu. She loves other pressure strategies that drain your opponent's life totals all at the same time. She is also a commander that you have no real reason to cast until at least one of your opponents have less than half of their life left, so in that sense the decks built around her won't depend on her too heavily. Before we jump into our revisions, we wanted to highlight some of the brand new cards you'll have access to in this product. Oresco's Explorer A ramp dude with a typical white restriction of people having to have more lands than you, so if you go first, this card may be difficult to really get advantage out of. Still, we are always happy to see ramp in white. Magus of the Wheel Finally, a Magus for one of the best red spells of all time. The art is so cool. He looks like an evil host for the actual Wheel of Fortune game show. Warchief Giant, Herald of the Host, and Blade of Selves. Let's talk about Myriad for a second. While the Giant and the Herald are not impressive creatures on their own, Myriad is going to be a pretty combalicious ability when used with Blade of Selves. I won't go into all the scenarios here, but let's just say that Enter the Battlefield abilities are a thing. Calamity's Captain Monstrosity is an awesome mechanic and it really fits well into the theme of Commander. Calamity's Captain's Monstrosity ability will probably not be activated the turn it comes out, but it will force your opponents who love their artifacts and enchantments to answer it as soon as possible. Dawnbreak Reclaimer This card is so deliciously political. If your playgroup is cutthroat, you'll both be naming the weakest creatures in the graveyard, but sometimes you can make deals if you need to take care of a bigger threat. Not to mention, it's a great group hug card. Sandstone Oracle In decks that don't really draw cards, Sandstone Oracle can be a great flying blocker and get you some card advantage. The card isn't crazy good, but the colorlessness of it gives it bonus points. Dream Pillager It seems that Wizards is determined to figure out every way to give red card advantage without printing the words draw and card as much as possible. This card reminds us of Chandra Pyromaster in that red, I don't care what happens to my cards, burn burn sort of way. Thought Vessel this card may very well be a staple in the making for newer commander players. Reliquary towers are slowly becoming harder and harder to come by, and things like Venture's Journal may not appeal to everyone. It is hard to argue with the advantage from Thought Vessel. Yes, you have to pay two for it, where Reliquary Tower does the exact same thing for free, but this thing is really accessible to the newer crowd. Plus, it being an artifact automatically makes it synergistic with a lot of stuff. Right of the Raging Storm this card has pressure deck written all over it. What is more pressuring than getting a hard hitting creature every turn that you have to use or it will go away? Grand Melee makes this card even better since the Lightning Ranger tokens can't attack the controller of the enchantment. Fiery Confluence The red card in the Confluence cycle. A neat pseudo command style card with tons of utility and options. Each of these cards are great and will see play in their respective colors. Meteor Blast a strange sort of Comet Storm wannabe. This card, like many red X spells, gets much better the more mana you put into it. Certainly not the next red board sweep, but it may be a good option if you need more ways in red to clear the entire board of your opponent's stuff. Now let's look at rebuilding Wade into battle for less than 25 bucks. We tasked our friend Kyle with working on the deck and he decided to focus in on Kalemni, specifically her giant subtype. That's right, we're turning this deck into a giant tribal deck, with the advantage being we will be triggering Kalemni's experience ability quite a bit with all of our big dudes. First, let's take a look at all the cuts required to make room for the 23 cards we will be adding. While the majority of these cards are very good, they simply do not fit our giant theme. Donglair Invoker, Fomoki the Lowblood, Hunted Dragon, Hostility, Victory's Herald, Angel of Serenity, Gisela Blade of Gold Light, Herald of the Host, Oresco's Explorer, Anya, Merciless Angel, Dawnbreak Reclaimer, Sandstone Oracle, Rite of the Raging Storm, and Dream Pillager. 
We want to add some better utilities to the deck and remove cards that take up unneeded space, so we are also cutting Breath of Daragaz, Fall of the Hammer, Cold Steel Heart, Seer Sundial, Staff of Nin, Curse of the Nightly Hunt, Faith's Fetters, and Blade of Selves. Arbiter of Null Ridge, while being a giant, was also removed. We want to beat our opponents into the ground. Giving them more life won't help us with that. Here are the cards we're adding to the deck. While they may not be the best creatures in the world, to keep to our theme, we are adding Giant Harbinger, Oathsworn Giant, Sentinel of Eternal Watch, Shatter Skull Recruit, Lair Watch Giant, Bloodshot Cyclops, and Koldaltha Ringleader. Note that the Red Giants typically make attacking way better, while the White Ones like to stay back and block. Brian Stout Arm is an exceptional giant with a hilarious ability. In this deck, he will be doing significant damage most of the time. Mirror Entity. All of your giants are already huge, but if you have enough mana, you can make them truly gigantic. We want a combination of solid removal to make beating face easier, as well as ways to make sure that creature removal doesn't ruin all of our plans. Wayfarer's Bobble gives us just a little bit more ramp to play our expensive giants. Seal of Cleansing, Return to Dust, Oblivion Ring, Austere Command, Harsh Mercy, Star Storm, and Comet Storm. These cards are all solid removal spells, with Harsh Mercy being like a one-sided wrath from time to time. Star Storm and Comet Storm also give you a little bit of extra reach. Insurrection, Waves of Aggression, Relentless Assault, and True Conviction. These cards make the idea of a bunch of giants attacking way more scary than that already is. Miraculous Recovery and Resurrection. You have big dudes. Your opponents want to ruin that. Act fast with these recovery spells. The Waiting Into Battle Precon has some interesting new cards and fantastic old ones, coming together to make a pretty good deck. While the direction chosen for the revisions may have cut a lot of good cards, the priority was building up the theme for the deck. If you love giants or are into theme decks in general, you should give these revisions a shot. Stay tuned for more Commander 2015 revisions. I'm Karsten with Top Go Productions, and as always, thanks for watching.